What's up everybody, welcome back to another Pro Guides episode. It's time for a new high elo tier list. With new item builds emerging, buffs and nerfs from Riot, and overall people getting more accustomed to the new playstyle, it's time to adjust the rankings of our list. Before we get to it, let's take a look at our top lane tier list first. For our first highlight, we have Rumble for you. With his recent changes, he's doing better against tanky enemies, and we're going to see more matchups that you'll pick him into. As for items, your very core is still likely going to be Hextech, Brodo Belt, Sorks, and Shadow Flame. Your champion just loves Patton way too much. We also have changes to his passive attack speed bonus. Do you think this will be enough to make him OP, or will you still fall short in terms of damage against the meta top laners? Let me know in the comments below. For our next pick, we're literally jumping on the Ivern top hype train just because it's super fun to look at and play. This champion is all about dominating the laning phase and allowing your jungler to actively play around you. Remember the times of Karma Top? This is similar. You're going to be using your brush bonus damage as well as your natural ranger advantage to bully out the enemy top laner. To do this, you're going to want to unironically rush Lich Bane and then go into Night Harvester. On paper, it sounds beyond weird, but it's definitely a fresh approach to playing the top lane until too many people do it and it gets nerfed. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Another thing that's bound to get nerfed in the near future is a pick in our jungle tier list, but first, let's take a look at it. Briefly after the release of the new item changes, Kindred felt like a massive loser. However, after some testing and some changes to the item builds, it's finally established that Trinity Force is the most broken item on her. You're basically turning into a juggernaut that deals unlimited amount of damage and all you need is the TF, Wits End, and Black Cleaver. On your first item, you spike so ridiculously hard that you won't even believe it at first. Similar to this change in itemization, we have another one in store for you and it's about Rek'Sai. She felt overall lacking as Prowler's Claw was changed and people needed some time to adjust. Her new build and the buff from 13.11 really helped her out to reclaim old glory. Funnily enough, she's one of the two champions that will most of the time do the same old trick, the level 3 gank. And for whatever reason, it mostly works out, but for Rek'Sai, it's a bit special. You want to tunnel into the enemy's lane from behind to deny their escape path. After you do that, it's all about your reaction to their flash. Once you're on top of them, it's most likely a done deal. So, as you're terrorizing the rift, don't forget to pick up Stridebreaker and Black Cleaver to never die and yet deal crazy damage. With the jungle roll wrapped up, let's talk about our giveaway. Every patch, one lucky winner can claim a prize. Win over 11,000 RP by clicking the link in the description below. After that, follow these simple steps. Sign up for the pro membership and drop your username in the comment section. Test your luck and who knows, you might be our next lucky winner. Speaking of winners, our next one comes in the form of a mid lane pick. The Nico rework has been a massive success in terms of player satisfaction. She's gimmicky, features a lot of strategic elements, and scales with the enemy's caffeine levels. Sounds weird? Well, yeah, but if the enemy is tired, they'll not notice the extra minion in the enemy's minion wave and you'll get a freebie. We even have an entire masterclass on the champion and you should definitely take a look at it if you want to master the art of disguise with this trickster. To make sure that you're well equipped, we're obviously going to be giving you guys one of her core builds. Rush Rocket Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, and Shadow Flame. A lot of mages love this build, and unless it's nerfed anytime soon, it's going to be your go-to when it comes to blasting. Our next champion might be on her way back to the mid lane role. Damage buffs and a minion gold increase has given her some extra power when it comes to laning and scaling. More often than not, Orianna's full combo felt a bit lacking, but with the added damage to that ultimate, it'll finally feel more satisfying to hit. Perhaps you'll go back to her glory days, but realistically speaking, she's most likely not going to become too overpowered given that the champions are in the meta. But if you want to pick her up, then these are her following items. Uden's Echo for an earlier spike and pen, Sorcerer Boots to put more emphasis on that, and obviously Archangels. Without the latter, you'll be in a lot of mana trouble, and we don't want that to happen, right? In order to bring some other trouble to the Rift, we're moving over to the ADC list, and as per usual, take your time and look at the different rankings first. Found your main? Great. Then let's check out our first highlight for this role. Here we have Draven, and this champion just never disappoints, unlike my love life. The damage potential that he offers is sick, and we even have a new build for him. Normally, you default to the Essence Reaver build for infinite mana, but for this patch, we're giving Trinity Force into Collector a shot. Don't forget Collector was buffed not too long ago, and Trinity Force as well. With the added tankiness and the power from Try and Collector, taking over a game might be a little bit easier. However, the economy nerf for Bloodthirster might be a little bit annoying, but it's Draven, so you either get rich or die trying. 
Similar to this maniac of the bot lane, we have another pick that does exactly the same thing, at least item wise. Samara loves a new combo of Trinity Force and Collector. Her low cooldown and spammable spell really puts value on the Spellblade proc and grants her more power in early fights. The added tankiness is also quite the neat thing, as Samara is infamous for diving behind enemy lines. Seriously though, Triforce is gonna get nerfed soon, no way this item stays the way it is. But as long as it stays this way, abuse it to the fullest. Last but certainly not least for today, we've arrived at the support role and you know the deal. To highlight something else for the patch, we want to give Rakan some spotlight, and here we have the Shirelius and Zeke's Convergence build. Providing you with the decent stats and playmaking capabilities, you're going to be taking over the game with a strong ADC by your side. Zeke's will give your best friend a lot of extra damage when you full combo into the enemy team, and you might be surprised how much damage this item can add to a fight. The next champion is also adding a lot to any fight, skirmish, and all in. Seraphine has been one of the most seller picks that went through so many phases in League. From the go-to mid laner to a broken APC, to then being played in a support role. Her value has always been crazy, and it was just a matter of time before everybody just gave her the credit that she deserved. With Moonstone getting a lot of buffs, we're curious to see if this item will finally take over on her, and Hylia will not be the go-to item on literally every enchanter at all times. Bond of Life, Echoes of Hylia, what a lovely meta. Funnily enough, people still don't build it on champions such as Karma because they believe in the power of Shirelius. Movement speed is important, but turning into a massive stat stick and offering tons of healing and extra damage is also not to be underestimated. Especially when it's intuitive as hell. So for Seraphine, give Moonstone into Sapphire Arden a shot and see how strong it can be compared to Helia as an alternative. For our last pick, we have a buffed one. Ash has received some nice buffs to her base damages and AP scaling, which is obviously targeted at her identity as a support champion. The thing about Ash is the following. The champion from ahead is broken as hell. She constantly applies Font of Life while Hylia does its usual job. At the same time, Ash is able to facilitate plays around the map with her enchanted crystal arrow, and even in skirmishes, the slow comes in clutch when it comes to hunting people down. What is the problem with this pick most of the time though? It's a skill issue and composition issue. You don't really want to blind pick this to a champion such as Nautilus, as they can make your life a living hell by forcing proactive plays early on thanks to their tankiness and damage. However, if you learn how to play this champion properly, get the spacing and trading down, you'll be amazed to see how strong she really is. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and sub to the channel for more pro guides content. I'll see you all in the next one, and until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.